All right, good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from News Channel 3 in downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. We continue to see some very quiet conditions into the rest of the evening for tonight after our last cold front has finally gotten through moving through the Mid-South area. And as it does, it's going to be bringing in some very cool weather for tonight. For the bus stop tomorrow morning, definitely want to make certain the kids are bundled up because as of right now, we'll be looking at some possible wind chills into the morning. Not exactly wintertime conditions out there, but once again, if you're standing out in the bus stop in shirt sleeves, you're going to need something to ward off the chill because it's going to be really uncomfortable out there into tomorrow morning if you have any plans for being outdoors for tomorrow at the bus stop. So please keep that in mind. Rest of the evening tonight, again, the forecast in the blue bar down this direction and also seeing again. Uh, social media information, our website, wreg.com, uh, currently above that at our weather section for more details as to what's going on there. Coming up in just a little bit, we've got a hurricane about ready to strike Ireland. We haven't seen that happen in quite some time. We'll be looking again for a little bit more information about that from the National Hurricane Center. We've got again that earthquake that happened into the area this morning, a 3.7. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. And we'll also take a look at your forecast questions as we round out the middle part of the mid-weekend of October 2017, where we finally got back to seeing a little bit more like milder conditions across much of the Mid-South area. Welcome to everybody for joining us on Facebook tonight. Got questions about the forecast or weather reports around the Mid-South? Drop them into the comments section. We'd love to see what the weather is like where you are located for this evening. Germantown City Hall cam, a little bit on the hazy side for this evening. If you'd like to see more of our weather bug cameras, they're available at wreg.com slash webcams. Rain is on the way out of the Mid-South picture for tonight. Northern parts of areas of Mississippi giving way to clearing skies and all that rainfall making its way back over to around portions of northwestern Alabama. So we don't have, again, a lot going on here. A few rumbles of thunder, but that's about it. And into and around the area of the rest of the Mid-South into around Memphis, let me bring this up full screen so everybody on Facebook can see more about this. Rest of the area, again, showing little, if anything, in the way of rainfall moving its way into the picture as we have very dry air in place across much of the area. If you're just joining us on Periscope and Twitter, thanks a lot for joining us on our social media networks for tonight. If you got questions about the forecast, drop them into the comments section on Periscope and Twitter. We'd love to be able to give you more information about what we're looking at here in the Mid-South area. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what was going on today. We did have, again, a lot of questions about what was going on with the earthquake this morning. Fortunately, it was the only one that actually happened. The one we're looking at here, that red dot, just to the south and east of Manila, Arkansas, about maybe 10 miles down and again just outside the area of Manila, Arkansas. This was a 3.7, happened at about 5.16 this morning, and it was felt all the way across the Mid-South area. And if you would like to participate in helping the scientists learn a little bit more about where and when and how much this thing was felt, as you can see in the maps taking place right here, this, again, gives you an idea as to who felt it, where, and how much. This is a did-you-feel-it map from the United States Geological Survey and from the Center for Earthquake Research and Information at the University of Memphis. This gives you an idea as to where the heaviest amount of shake reports were felt. No damage, no injuries, anything like that. And the main reason this has been such a big deal is because of the fact that this was the biggest earthquake that we have had in the News Channel 3 viewing area for at least the last couple of years years somewhere in there. Uh, Grady Bennett from Berclair, 62 and comfortable. Very good. Marilyn Pang, uh, welcome from the Senatobia area around the Mid-South. Check in on Periscope and Facebook. If you have any questions, be glad to have you along for the ride answering about what we can. Now, here's the thing. If you felt something out of this, and if you did, that's great. If you'd like to tell the United States Geological Survey and Surrey about this, go to our weather section at wreg.com slash weather. Scroll down beneath the forecast page on wreg.com slash weather. You'll see the graphic entitled Mid-South Earthquakes, and you'll also go down a little bit further than that to the Did You Feel It section, and that's where you can click this link, and it'll take you directly to the comments section about 
what you felt, where, and when. This is what all you have to do is click on that felt report. What did you feel? Tell us what did you feel? Did you feel anything? Where were you? Were you asleep? Was anybody else affected? Did describe the shaking that went on? Was there any damage? How do you respond? All that information can come in very, very handy to seismologists. It's called citizen science, and it's a way for you to participate and what goes on in scientific studies. You don't need a PhD to perform scientific research, and you can help on this by getting information about this and into the right hands. And again, that's available at wreg.com slash weather. Scroll down beneath the video forecast page, and you'll have the information right there. Tracy Hodges, Hodges Roberts shaking the bed in South Haven. Uh, a lot of people reporting a lot of things like that from early this morning at about 5.15, 5.16 in the morning. Lasted for less than a minute and was just powerful enough for everybody to see that. But tons of information available if you'd like to know more about that. Again, it's all available at our website, wreg.com slash weather. Temperatures across the Mid-South, again, things are much cooler than what they were about maybe just six hours ago as we see that warm air 70s into portions of Alabama, Jasper, Alabama at the lower 70s, mid to upper 70s down toward Montgomery and around Birmingham, and you can quite clearly see where that temperature delineation difference is right back across Alabama. That's the cold front making its way back on toward the south and to the east, so some very cool numbers out there finally, and getting into some nicer conditions out across much of the mid-south into tonight, but it will be brisk in the morning. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little while. Here's the view from Ireland, taking a look at Talbot Street in Dublin, Ireland. Not a lot going on. We do have, again, a little bit of wind and rainfall. This one available uh, from a, the Weather Call Ireland network. And again, a little bit of rain coming down, a little bit of breeze uh, just past about 2 o'clock in the morning, almost 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, reported around Dublin at weather under dash call.com and plenty of other webcams on there. We are waiting to find out more about when the conditions are going to deteriorate here as we look into the course of the rest of the morning. Uh, by the time the sun comes up, conditions may be deteriorating pretty rapidly as Ophelia, almost on the farthest edge of the National Hurricane Center's boundary, continues to make its way back toward the north and east, and it is still even though it is way out of the tropics, a Category 1 hurricane. So this thing is still possibly going to hit Ireland as a hurricane sometime tomorrow morning, southwest Ireland. This is almost unheard of to see something like this, and it could be going right across areas of close to Northern Ireland, Scotland, north of the area of Yorkshire, and into and around the upper North Sea area by tomorrow night, early Tuesday morning. Uh, still is a tropical storm with some very breezy winds, so we could see some damage out of this, and we'll be watching this carefully to see what goes on. So absolutely incredible to see this uh, going on through this particular area. So more information on that as we go throughout the next couple of days. Only thing we have in the tropics is beyond this. Let me get the lights settled down for our Facebook viewers. Uh, looking at a new disturbance. Well, not new. It's been there for a little while, but it may be making its way uh, over and around the area close to uh, the outer Bahamas, the eastern Bahamas, and heading back to the north and to the west. Now, it doesn't show much promise, 40% maybe development possibility on this, but it still shows the potential of curving up between the eastern United States and back into around the area of Bermuda, and again, maybe about a 40% chance of anything developing out of this as we go into the course of the next couple of days. So if you have any plans uh, for travel out there, this could be something that we are going to be uh, watching out there to see what goes on. But it does not uh, seem to be a big threat to us and nothing at this time either going on in the Gulf of Mexico. So that is really good news uh, at this point in time. So good news on that. The storm system again getting a lot more lopsided. Ophelia just to the southwest of Ireland getting very close, very wrapped up in itself, but still a lot of very powerful winds in that storm. Starting to dry out on the southeast quarter a little bit, thanks in part to some of that drier, sandier air coming up from off of Africa. So that may help to degrade it by just a little bit, but we still have a long way to go before this thing is totally burned out in the next few days. News Channel 3 Weather Center and the Mid-South, according to the National Weather Service, 
showing no problems in the next few days. Hazardous weather not showing a problem, very low potential of anything happening as high pressure reasserts itself across much of the area, giving us sunny skies. Next storm system is still several days away at best, so we're just not really seeing too much of anything else uh, into the area just yet, at least until high pressure begins to break things down by just a little bit here so not doing too bad into the area for now but in the next several days that could change a bit let's talk about tonight and into early tomorrow morning we'll be seeing again temperatures rather on the brisk side out there low temperatures tonight lower to mid 40s north of i-40 around the metro area upper 40s to around lower 50s likewise into northern mississippi into and around the area for uh, tomorrow morning. Bozo Wolfolk, yeah, a bit on the brisk side tomorrow morning in Senatobia. You're probably going to be in the upper 40s to lower 50s in that location, and the rest of the Mid-South seeing some pretty cold conditions. Now, that's bad enough in and of itself. Look at the winds tomorrow morning, about 5 to 10 miles per hour, which means the wind chills tomorrow could be back into the lower 40s for areas along and north of I-40. South of I-40 in the metro area, wind chills could be back into the mid to upper 40s to lower 50s. And uh, Bobby Midget checking in with Talk Back Live. Very good to see you on there, sir. Time changing October 23rd, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on AM 730. I'll have to adjust my graphics on that. Thank you very much for uh, letting us all know on that. Into Monday, temperatures back in the high 60s to right about 70 degrees. Very comfortable out there for tomorrow. Winds will be a little breezy, gusting to around 10 to 15 miles per hour. Looks like 10 to 20 miles per hour down around Clarksdale and into around northwest Mississippi. Heading into tomorrow night, low temperatures again, chilly 30s around Union City, Dyersburg, Jackson, Humboldt, Milan into that area. That again could be some very chilly numbers for the bus stop on very early Tuesday morning as well. Tuesday's highs a little warmer back in the lower to mid 70s and over the excuse me, the course of the next couple of days, we could be looking at even warmer conditions coming on through. It doesn't look like we're going to be cooling off specifically anytime soon. It will be quite pleasant coming up as we get into the course of the next few days. Seven-day forecast available at wreg.com slash weather. Right after this weekend, our next best chance of rain will be coming up next, next Monday. That'll be the best opportunity that we've got for anything involving rainfall at this time, and that's really going to be about all that we see into much of the Mid-South area. More on my forecast available at my Facebook page. It is National Grouch Day. I would say Happy National Grouch Day, but that kind of defeats the purpose. So again, National Grouch Day today. Don't forget to stop by my Twitter page for more information about what's going on with the forecast out and about through the area. Be glad to have you along and keep you updated as to what's going on in and around the Mid-South in 140 characters or less. And again, keeping you updated on what's going on with pictures as well. Gotten a lot of great pictures out across the Mid-South for tonight. Uh, Sureware underscore sending a very nice picture of sunset from around the Salisbury, Tennessee area for tonight. So a very cool view uh, for this evening. If you've got anything out there, we would love to see it. Please tweet them to me at aonic underscore wreg3 or aonic no underscore necessary on Instagram. And again, great to be able to have you along uh, for stuff like that. We'll have more information about the rest of the forecast coming up again throughout what's left of the weekend on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3, and also tomorrow morning with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live, 7 to 9 a.m., but that will be changing into the next few days. Uh, Greg Griffin, lightning flashes west of Senatobia. Not too sure what that would be. We don't have anything on the radar at this point in time, uh, so nothing uh, showing up at that location at this point. We'll take a look at radar again and see if there's anything there. Uh, Bozo Wolfolk, Halloween night, a little too early to tell on that. A little too early to stretch that out into the future, but unfortunately the medium range forecast does hold out the possibility of maybe getting into some very warm conditions out that direction, and unfortunately it doesn't really look like much is going to be uh, cooling us off for any time soon out across the area there. Uh, Climate Prediction Center, I thought I had the information located here someplace. Uh, doesn't look like it's up here at this point in time, so we'll have to post that a little bit later on. But again, unfortunately, the 8 to 14 day forecast is showing the potential 
of maybe some problems out there uh, when it comes to anything involving uh, situation there. Hang on just one second here. Let me get uh, this loaded up. Okay, Climate Prediction Center. Uh, this is what we use instead of the ye old or ye young or ye whatever it is, Farmer's Almanac. Uh, the next three months for temperatures are showing not exactly good news for the next several weeks. This is for, again, the next couple of months through October, November, and December above normal temperatures across much of the continental United States. Narrowing that down by just a little bit, let's go to, again, Again, 8 to 10 day outlook. Well, this one's a little bit better. This forecast just updated uh, within about the next last 24 hours, and it shows near normal conditions where temperatures are concerned right on in through the end of the month. So again, this is looking a little bit better uh, into that area. So this is, again, less of a chance of anything involving main problems at this point in time. Uh, David Howell, yeah, we just got uh, information about that in the newsroom. We'll be monitoring more on that coming up on the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10. If you'd like to see more about this, Climate Prediction Center, great place to go to for tons of information in regards to what's going on with the forecast, and that's all available at cpc.ncep.noaa.gov, or just go to noaa.gov, and they'll have tons of information about how you can get to that particular location, including information about the wildfires out west, tons of information available there. Uh, so far, again, no indications of anything going on with extra earthquakes. Let's hope it stays that way, and so far looking very quiet into the forecast for us here in the Mid-South area for the course of the evening tonight. Chilly tomorrow morning, so make certain the kids are bundled up before they hit the bus stop. We'll be on a little late tonight. NFL football wrapped up about a half an hour after 6 p.m., so we'll be on somewhere around 10.30 tonight with the late edition <clears throat> Excuse me, of News Channel 3 at 10. So be sure to join us for that. And also Todd Demers will have more in your forecast coming up uh, throughout the area into around tomorrow morning, starting bright and early on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Questions, concerns, anything here that you would like to see but I didn't cover, let me know. I would love to know more about what you would like to see on here as your weathercast here on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram on Weather Overtime. So please let me know. Blue bar right up there where it says austin.onic at wrag.com. Please let me know about what you'd like to see on here, and we'll adapt it and focus on that if we have time, depending on what's going Going on with the weather and would love to have you coming back for this and also feel free to share this around social media as well so that everybody knows what's going on in the mid-south i got to get ready for the news channel 3 late edition show so stay tuned for more on that coming up in just about maybe a little bit over an hour and a half and stay tuned for more with news channel 3 on air and online throughout what's left of the weekend and all through next week thanks for joining us for our exclusive video weather blog weather overtime for sunday evening